In August this year, President Yoweri Museveni and his Rwandan counterpart Paul Kagame signed a deal to try and mend ties, vowing to respect each other's sovereignty and refraining from actions that would destabilize the other's territory. But since then, little has changed and instead incidents involving shooting of smugglers in the other's territory have increased. Analysts fear that these actions may push the two countries into proxy wars. By the time the two leaders put pen to paper on the 21st of August in Angola, the row between Uganda and Rwanda had reached fever pitch after the Chigali regime closed the border points at Katuna and Chanika in Kabali and Chisoro districts, respectively. The erstwhile allies, turned implacable adversaries, sought the intervention of a neutral party to resolve this dispute. The accusation was that Rwandans had been detained in Comunicado in jail without trial in competent courts and in some cases tortured and then deported without consular support or due process. Uganda shot back, accusing Chigali of trying to infiltrate the country with espionage agents. International relations analysts say the breach of the agreement could be stemming from ego borne by the two, Museveni and Kagame. In a way, they have been around for a longer time than the sponsors who have called them for a peace talk. So looking at it from that perspective, one could easily suspect that these people were not going to respect the memorandum of understanding. This agreement for me was not binding uh, on, on Uganda and, and Rwanda uh, because they've already violated an agreement they signed in the East African Community Treaty uh, for the East African integration, the East African community. But if um, they had not respected the one that unites them, what about the one in Angola? They add that the convener and witnesses of the pact in Angola barely have any experience in mediation to bring former allies Museveni and Kagame, who have been in power for more than two decades. Jao Lorenzo of Angola, who hosted the first meeting, has only been in power for two years. President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Felix Chisekedi, has held office for 11 months. Only Denis Sassung Weso of the Republic of the Congo, who witnessed the signing, has been in office for 22 years. Whereas Rwanda's Kagame and Uganda's Museveni have been in power for 19 and 33 years respectively. Early this week, two Ugandans were shot dead for smuggling goods into Rwanda, according to a statement released by the Rwanda police. And on Sunday, another Rwandan national was shot and injured while trying to return home. In response, Uganda protested the high-handedness being used to handle what was termed as a criminal act against unarmed civilians. I should commend the government of Uganda, in my opinion, for not escalating the tensions. Because when you lose a citizen, it is incumbent on you to defend or to retaliate. It is provided for in international relations. Not respecting it means escalation of the conflict. And in most cases, this may lead into war. However, Museveni and Kagame have since appeared on different television interviews responding to the Rwanda-Uganda situation. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing logic, good reason will prevail and uh, we, we might uh, find a way forward. All right, we look but there is, what is very important is to have good regard for each other. What, what I have said is that I will not want to discuss in the press what I have time to discuss with was President Kagame in a confidential meeting. So how do the two countries move forward from here? Them, the two states accepting to go to talks by themselves, if that's possible. The other one is being compared by a third force, which has more higher power capability than DRC and Angola. It now remains unclear on when the next meeting will be held. But key among the issues to be discussed include opening up the borders, which has since crippled trade between the two countries. Walter Mwesije, NTV.